guys, I hope that you're all really well. My name's Lucy if you're new here and I would love it if you came over and subscribed if you like what you see. I upload all sorts of videos, fashion, beauty, parenting, food videos, whatever you'd like to see. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any video ideas. So today's video is going to be a Q&A, just a general Q&A. I asked on Instagram if you guys had any questions. I haven't actually had a look at them yet so I do get a little bit nervous when I do Q&As in case someone asks me something that I don't really want to answer. But anyway, I'm going to jump straight into it and get on with the questions. I think Q&As are a really good way of getting to know the people that you're watching, so I hope that you enjoy watching and enjoy my answers. <laughs> so these are in a totally random order. As I said, I haven't looked at them, so I haven't sorted them into categories, so sorry if they are completely sporadic. But the first question is, how much longer do you have on Invisalign? So if you didn't know already, I have Invisalign braces on my teeth. I'll pop a little playlist below if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about what the braces are but they're basically clear plastic braces I'm wearing them now and I'm supposed to have two weeks left but I think I'm gonna have longer because I'm not really happy with this tooth here I think it needs to move forward a little bit so I was meant to be finished within the next two weeks which would take the total time I've had them up to 18 months but I think I'm gonna need a little bit longer so the next question is how did you and your husband meet so my husband's name is Scott and we met at work uh, 10 years ago I think it was. So I was working at a company and he worked for another company that used to come into mine and I saw him outside the toilets one day. He wasn't like loitering outside the toilet, his desk was near the toilets and I was going into the toilet and I just caught his eye. We both smiled at each other and I just immediately felt an instant connection to him. I know that sounds so cheesy but I really just felt like I loved him. <laughs> it was just so weird. He was my type, he was really attractive and had a really nice smile and I remember going to the toilet, running back to my desk and telling the girls at work that, oh my god I really fancy that guy, who is he? And they were like, oh I'm really, you know, we knew you'd fancy him. Um, so yeah, that's how we met at work and we didn't start dating straight away, we just sort of knew each other and chatted for a couple of years and then we started dating after that. Do you guys use sign language when Harry doesn't use his magic ears? So a little bit of background on that, my son Harry is five and he was born profoundly deaf, he wears cochlear implants on his ears to enable him to hear. So at night time he doesn't wear his implants because they need to be charged and other times are like when he's in the bath and things, um, sometimes when he's swimming he doesn't wear them. So we do use a little bit of sign language but me and my husband aren't particularly amazing at it. Um, Harry also doesn't know that much but we do use a bit of basic British sign language we also kind of make up our own signs for things so when he's shouting for me to come upstairs after I put him to bed like an hour ago I will go upstairs and I'll say what's wrong and I'm like go to sleep close your eyes things like that so yeah we do use a little bit of basic sign he's actually really really good at lip reading though so yeah we use probably lip reading more than we do sign language now how often do you dye your hair I'm going gray early and I feel self-conscious so I have had gray or they're actually white hairs I've had white hairs in my head since I was about 21 which is really really young I think my mum had the same thing my sister doesn't she's so lucky um but yeah me and my mum are very dark haired and we have had white and grey hairs from a really young age so I've been dyeing my hair, god I've been dyeing my hair since I was a teenager, I've gone through like the whole colour spectrum, I've been dark, red, blonde and now I've kind of settled for a, what do you call this, like a blonde, like a brown blonde, um, I have a lot of greys and white hairs, I feel like eventually one day I'm just gonna have to embrace it and go with like some sort of grey blondy mane but I just don't know if it will really suit me so for now I do cover up my greys as much as I can I just don't really I don't know I feel like it's a personal preference I really like grey hair on men and to be honest I never notice grey hair on women either but for me when I see grey hairs in my head it just makes me feel really old so I like to cover them up um, so I do dye my hair I get my hair done between every six to eight weeks and by eight weeks I have a lot of greys and white hairs to cover. I literally have just had my hair done so yeah there's not a single grey in sight. I have a similar complexion to you, which fake tan do you use? You look amazing. Oh that's so nice, thank you. Um, so I use Tanologist fake tan 
it's a really really good one it's actually kind of changed my whole tanning game because before I was using Saint Tropez or like a real full-on fake spray tan or mousse putting on with a mitt going to bed my bed would smell my pajamas would smell I would smell and yeah it was it was like okay but I found Tanologist which is um, a self tan brand they do do spray tans and I think they do a mousse as well but they also do this little serum that comes in actually let me go and get it so I just thought it'd be easier to show you so they do this little serum glass type bottle um, which are drops that you just put into your moisturiser so as you can see it's running out I really need to get another one I use it all of the time so you basically have a pipette here that you fill up I don't want to spill any of this and you just put some of these drops probably about half of that into your moisturiser and then you just put it all over your body and wash your hands and you're good to go it does not smell like fake tan at all you can get away with not washing it off in the morning if you want to but I obviously tend to and I just find that it gives you a really really even natural tan I am a little bit tanned anyway because I had to have some light therapy for my psoriasis so that gave my skin a bit of color anyway but I like to top it up with this I probably use this once a week maybe twice if I'm going out or I'm getting my legs out or something but yeah only really like once or twice a week I feel like it fades evenly it doesn't leave you with like I don't know you know when you get that like horrible leftover fake tan in your skin it doesn't seem to leave you with that it just comes off or blends in easily and yeah I just really really love it I can't rave about it enough this is my fourth bottle I've bought so the next question is what makeup products do you use and I thought I would grab a few of my favorites that I'm using at the moment so for a foundation I do I actually keep getting asked this and I'm guessing it's because it's making my skin look quite glowy and tanned um, and it's what foundation do I use and this is a new one I believe this is by Rimmel it's their lasting radiance lasting radiance yeah I think it's lasting radiance foundation it is super glowy when you rub it onto your hand and leave it for a little while it has like a highlight kind of shimmer to it not too shimmery though but yeah it's got like a bit of a glow to it so I think that picks up really well on camera um, and gives you like that real sort of dewy glow without being too kind of greasy looking I hope um, it's a full coverage foundation which I need I have quite a lot of spots at the moment and I do have some acne scarring but I think it's a really really good coverage it actually says on here that it's medium coverage but I would definitely say it's medium to full without feeling too thick and heavy this is in 103 which is true ivory which I would not say is an ivory at all I normally go for a beige sort of colouring um, but I got the beige in this and it's so dark it might be good for holidays and stuff but I definitely think that the um, you should go a shade lighter than you actually are in this foundation because it does come out quite dark I've also been using the Zoella Colourpop brunch date eyeshadow palette this eyeshadow palette is absolutely amazing the colors in here are so beautiful it's such a mixture of some color some bronzes and some pinks I like to use a lot of the bronzy orangey kind of copper colors and there's a really nice shimmery pink in there as well so I've been using a lot that a lot on my eyes for mascara I use the Benefit fit roller lash this is hands down the best mascara I've ever used and then for bronzer and highlight I use this Charlotte Tilbury highlight and bronzer duo as you can see it's massively running out I've hit pan big time on the bronzer and I'm about to hit pan on the highlighter as well but I can't live without this I take it everywhere with me and I just think it's the best bronzer and highlighter out there would you ever consider doing YouTube as your full-time job oh this is a tricky one isn't it so if you didn't know already I do YouTube Instagram the blogging social media thing as a side job but it's definitely now more of a full-time job I do have another job as well which used to be full-time and is now part-time for me I'm a buyer at an IT company and I work Monday Tuesdays and Fridays just short days now um, it's really hard I really love the idea of doing YouTube social media blogging full-time I don't really make enough money to justify to do it full-time at the moment and it's always just so uncertain as well I like to have security I like the lifestyle I have now and I obviously earn a little bit of money from my other job that I have but I know that it's a steady income so I'm quite happy with the balance at the moment it's very very busy I obviously 
obviously have two jobs as well as being a mum and the whole social media thing doesn't ever seem to switch off I can't really ever not be working when I'm on social media if that makes sense so yeah it's a weird one I would love to eventually but I don't know if I'm quite ready to do it just yet. I also really like having my other job because it's so far away from all of this social media and YouTube thing and it's like a break. I like going in there using my brain for something other than taking photos and being creative. It's just, I don't know, I just really love it and I've done it for so long that it would be really hard to let go. Can I have some advice for an anxious mum whose child is starting school? Yes, you can. So I was that mum, my son Harry started school last September and I know exactly how you're feeling. I think I spent probably a good year feeling an anxious before Harry started school and all I can say is every child is different obviously your experience will be different to mine but try not to worry they will be absolutely fine i was so worried because harry did three taster sessions during the summer holidays before he started reception and he was hysterical at all three of them one of them my husband actually had to sit out in the playground with him the whole time so he just wouldn't go in so i was so so scared for him to start school he didn't go to nursery he had a childminder so he just wasn't used to that environment and i was just so worried for him i was worried about him in general and also the fact that he was deaf and would people be able to understand him and would the teachers be able to teach him properly but oh my goodness he was amazing literally the first day he was a little bit cautious but went in and was an absolute breeze and he, we haven't looked back since he's just come on leaps and bounds I think even the most shy and anxious child eventually will start to like school or at least enjoy it once they're there even if they get upset and I think you have to kind of think of it as they have to go to school and you want them to go to school or you want them to get an education. So you kind of have to let go a little bit and it is really hard, but since Harry started school, our relationship is so much better. He communicates with me better. He takes um, discipline better. He listens to instructions a bit more. You know, it's got his testing times. He comes out of school miserable as hell, but you just kind of find your own path. So I hope that's helped and I hope that it's made you feel a little bit less worried. Does Harry have a middle name? This is really funny actually, because me and Harry were only talking about this the other day. He didn't actually realize that he had a middle name. I don't know if that's my fault. I don't know if I should have really insulted stored it in him when he was younger that his name is not just Harry Houchin um so yeah I said to him the other day Harry Jack Houchin and he's like that's not my name so we had a discussion about middle names he was like why do I have that I didn't really know how to explain it because I have no idea why people have a middle name but Harry's middle name is Jack I absolutely love the name Jack it was my granddad's name it actually wasn't his real name but Back in the olden days, I don't think people got called by their real names. So his name was Henry and he got called Jack, which is a little bit weird. But also, Harry is short for Henry. So I feel like we kind of named Harry after my granddad, who I was really close to and has sadly passed away. So yeah, Harry's name is Harry Jack Houchin. Does Harry ever ask you for a pet? Again, this question is so relevant right now. So Harry is absolutely desperate to get a dog, which fills me with absolute dread. And I know that sounds really awful and I know so many people are dog lovers, but I actually have a little bit of a phobia of dogs. And um, I'm getting a lot better as I get older because my sister has always had dogs and she has an absolutely huge golden doodle called Ellie. Um, I'll try and pop a picture on because she is actually so adorable. And I absolutely love her, but I don't really like touch her that much. I don't go, I don't, I don't like cuddle her. I'll give her a stroke every now and again. And we have that kind of barrier. She she knows the relationship. She doesn't come too close. Um, and she's also really cuddly. She doesn't bark. She's not scary. Um, and it kind of stems from when I was little, I got chased by a dog when I was at my granddad's house. Um, and I was really small and it was quite a vicious dog. And it didn't hurt me or anything, but it kind of put in my head that dogs are gonna hurt me. And I don't know why, I know it's quite irrational because I know most dogs are trained really well and they are really friendly. And I know that having a dog would be so lovely for Harry, but I just can't imagine having a dog and 
take and, and feeling safe. I know that sounds really weird, that sounds really silly because I know that loads of people have dogs but that's just how I feel and he's desperate for one and maybe one day I'll change my mind. But there's also the fact that me and Scott are out at work quite a lot, we are out the house quite a lot, we like to travel so I do worry that it would be a little bit unfair to get a dog and not be at home a lot to take care of it. And also my husband is a neat freak and I don't think he'd cope with the mess. <laughs> what did you do for your hen party and would you recommend it? So I had two hen parties, I got married last August and my first hen party was to London, we went in a limo, it was so fun, we had loads of really good 90s music, we went in a limo, we went for brunch, I can't remember what the brunch place was called but there was like drag queens singing and it was just really funny, so we had brunch there and then we went to a bar, then we went on to watch Dream Boys which is my absolute worst nightmare, I feel like my hens my bridesmaids wanted to torture me because I just can't I just can't stand strippers I just hate it but actually it was so hilarious and we had such a good time then we got a limo back and then we also went to Croatia and it was the best place and holiday I have ever ever had it was so much fun Croatia itself is stunning so we flew into Split and then we got a speedboat over to Havar. I could talk about this for hours, I'm going to try and cut it short, but Croatia is just absolutely stunning. We had two villas, we called them the Love Island Villas and our villas were just absolutely stunning. Croatia was stunning, the nightlife was amazing. Actually one night you had to get on a speedboat to go across to another island where there was a nightclub and I just thought that that was so cool. But yeah, I feel really, really lucky. My bridesmaids were so amazing and I would 100% recommend Croatia for a hen party. <laughs> Someone's asked here, what is your husband's actual name because you always call him Mr. H? Um, I don't know where Mr. H came from, it just kind of, I started writing it and it stuck, but Mr. H's actual name is Scott. <laughs> Do you ever get takeaways? If so, what do you order? Oh my god, me and Scott are the worst for getting takeaways. We're actually on a massive health kick at the moment, so there's been no takeaways for us. But we or normally we would order a Chinese, an Indian, or Domino's. We dabble in a bit of Thai. There's not really a lot of takeaway areas around here, but yeah, we would normally get a Domino's. If it's Domino's, I have a half and half because I like every topping. <laughs> so I have half veggie and half meat. That means you get a bit of everything. Thing. and if it's Chinese we get sauteed chicken, egg fried rice, um, what's the crispy stuff? Crispy seaweed and what else do we get? A chicken curry normally and Harry loves Chinese as well um, and if we have an Indian I always get a prawn biryani, delicious. How are you feeling after your miscarriage? So if you didn't know already I had a miscarriage last year, I think it was October last year so um, I feel okay about it now. Afterwards for a good few months I felt really rubbish. Obviously it's not a nice thing to go through and the fact that I haven't become pregnant since I guess is quite hard as well. Um, but I've got a lot to focus on this year so I'm not really dwelling on it, I'm not feeling too sad, I believe everything happens for a reason. So yeah that's kind of how I'm feeling. If Harry was a girl what would he be called? So at the time back when we were pregnant he would have either been called Winter, which I absolutely hate now, or Bella, uh, which I really love still. But if I was to choose now, if he had to be a girl, it would be Harper, because um, I think that's really cute and I also like that it would be another H. Would you recommend Invisalign braces? I would 100 million percent recommend them. They have absolutely not only changed my teeth and my smile but changed my life and I know that sounds really dramatic but I was really self-conscious before. I even just going to public places and being in social situations where I was talking directly to somebody, I was just so self-conscious of my mouth that I wouldn't talk as much, um, I never used to smile in photos so I always just look back at photos and I just look miserable even though I wasn't, I just didn't like showing my teeth. Um, yeah, it's just really changed everything for me and I just think it was worth every penny. What was the best wedding decision you made and the worst wedding decision you made? Oh, this is a good one. Um, I think the best wedding decision we made is to not have a formal wedding and to have it very relaxed um, because I feel like my guests felt relaxed and it just was exactly how I wanted it to be in that respect. 
we did have speeches but we had you know the usual speeches then I did a speech we didn't do a cake cutting because I just didn't really see the point in it we didn't do a lot of the normal formalities that you normally have and it just felt really relaxed and that's how I wanted it to be. I think for me my worst decision was to get married at two o'clock. I wish that I got married at one o'clock or even earlier just because I wanted the day to go on so much longer. I also wish that I'd told my caterers to keep back some of the, um, what's the food, you know, the canapes at the beginning for me because I didn't get to try any and they just all went really quickly. So I kind of wish that I'd got to try some of the canapes because not only was I starving, but we'd paid for that food and it was tasty. I wanted to try it. Apart from running, how are you preparing for the Himalayas? So I don't know if I've said in this video already, but I'm going on a charity trek to the Himalayas in October. I'm so excited. I've done one before, it's with Copperfield, so I'm raising money for breast cancer awareness. I'm actually going on behalf of Avon this time and helping cover the event, raise a bit more awareness. But I've got to raise £3,000, so if you fancy donating, I'll pop a link below. I'm doing lots of fundraising activities for it coming up. Um, but yeah, it's prep wise, I have just started running, I've started the Couch to 5k app, I'm actually doing a bit of a fitness video which I don't know if it will be up before or after this one so look out for that um, where I'll explain a little bit more what other fitness stuff I'm doing but I'm basically doing running three times a week and in between that I'm doing HIIT workouts which I've just got from YouTube videos for free in my living room at home. I'm thinking about joining the gym as well just to get in that extra strength training and maybe giving me a few more tips for the Himalayas but we will see. So I'm going to leave my Q&A there guys. There was a few more questions that I haven't answered but I might just pop them into another Q&A another time but thank you so much for all of your questions. I really enjoyed answering those. Let me know if you've got anything else you want to ask me. Pop them in the comments below and I will answer and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!